Why did the RTS genre die? It's one of those questions where if you ask a hundred different PC gamers, you're probably going to get a hundred different answers, but I still think it's an interesting topic to think about, and that is exactly what we're going to do in this video. I think I have a few very good reasons, even if they aren't the only reasons that the genre found itself on a decline. But before we get into that, I just wanted to thank the Patreon supporters. I wanted to call Matthias from Sweden, who backs this channel at the highest level, and also Zach Garcia, who suggested this topic. If you want to join them, I will leave a link to the Patreon in the description. But with that, well, let's get into it. Acknowledge. Westwood's Command and Conquer is the game that blew the yes, real-time strategy genre wide open. It sold about 1 million copies in its first year, and its follow-up, Command and Conquer Red Alert, sold even better. Figures like that counted as a breakout hit in the mid-1990s, and everyone certainly sat up and took notice. Later titles like Ensemble's Age of Empires 2 and, of course, Blizzard's StarCraft only further proved that there was gold to be found in them real-time strategy hills. Of course, this led to a flood of copycats. Now, I'm sorry if some of these games are a personal favorite, but a few games that come to mind are Lords of EverQuest, the Star Trek Armada games, and there was even a trilogy of games based on the Left Behind novels. Yes, seriously, look it up. They exist. Now, games like this, they just mostly came across as a cash grab, and beyond that, there was just too much. Games like the Lord of the Rings, the Battle for Middle-Earth series, Star Wars, Empire at Wars, and Stronghold were pretty decent games, but there was just so much out there. With several dozen titles at least hitting the market every year, I think gamers were just overwhelmed. Now, a few dozen titles, that doesn't sound like very much today, does it? I mean, after all, Steam has tens of thousands of games going up on it every year. But remember, uh, this is well before digital was on the rise. This was mostly retail. Gamers were still going into stores and they were looking for games on shelf. I remember puzzling over what to buy while staring at the shelves at Best Buy and Fry's myself. There was just so many games staring back at you and it was very hard to make a decision. And this is not just my opinion. Last year, for a article I wrote for Wired about Age of Empires 4, I spoke with Quinn Duffy, who is the game director, or was the game director, on that title. While I was talking to him, I wanted to hear a little bit about why he thought the genre had declined. He said that, quote, there was a good period there where half a decade of clones came out. There were some gems, but for people entering into the genre, the first experience might have been something not great. He was a designer at Relic Entertainment from 1998 all the way to 2010, and he was still with Relic after that, he just got promoted. So he certainly knows what he's talking about. Unfortunately, a flood of software is often bad news for everyone involved in the market, and that certainly bore out. Development of new RTS games really started to slow down from 2005 on as publishers became tired of throwing money into an overcrowded market. By 2010, the flood of new RTS games had slowed to a trickle, and that's really remained the case ever since. Sword Art tried to engage there, but the dredge line only fight. Of course, fans of the genre did not just disappear from the face of the earth as the genre's popularity began to fall off. Instead, they kind of went to some spin-off genres, most notably tower defense and multiplayer online battle arenas, better known today, of course, as MOBAs. Now, tower defense games, they experienced their own cycle of popularity and eventual demise, but for a while, they were very hot. The most popular example on the PC and on consoles was probably Defense Grid The Awakening, which was a really big indie hit back in 2009. But let's be honest, a lot of the action in this genre was happening on mobile and in the casual gaming space. Games like Plants vs. Zombies, Jim Craft, Kingdom Rush, and Bloons Tower Defense. These were the titles that were really hot in the genre. And for a time, they were dominating charts on the App Store and on the Google Play Store. These tower defense games really took up all the casual interests that remained in the real-time strategy genre. They were easy to play, easy to get into, and easy to put down. On the opposite end of the spectrum, you have the MOBAs. The genre got its start back in StarCraft with custom maps and then really evolved in Warcraft 3 with Defense of the Ancients. 2009 was a big year because that's when League of Legends came out. And then in 2013, well, Dota 2 came out on Steam. There were a few other contemporary efforts that most people don't remember today. Uh, Demigod was one of those, along with Avalon Heroes. And even Warhammer Online apparently tried to spin itself off as a MOBA, although I, I didn't play that one, I gotta be honest. Of course, in any case, MOBAs ended up proving really great for esports because they're extremely focused on micromanagement and player skills. So 
they siphoned off all the serious players. Now, this isn't to say there's no longer a space for traditional real-time strategy games, as the success of the Age of Empires remasters and of Age of Empires 4 have proven. Still, I think it's pretty clear the genre has evolved into a variety of offshoots that differ quite a bit from the original concept. And from that perspective, I think it's worth questioning whether the rather tight definition of a real-time strategy game had doomed the genre from the start. Comparing StarCraft II to games like Sins of a Solar Empire or Factorio will get some real-time strategy game fans pretty annoyed pretty quickly. And even games like Dawn of War 2 are sometimes excluded from real-time strategy canon. I think this lack of flexibility may have accidentally painted the genre into a corner. Destroyed. Our unit destroyed. I find myself thinking a lot about why some games succeed and others fail. It is, after all, a very interesting part of video game history. One theory is that breakout hits tend to happen at the intersection between a novel new technology and innovative gameplay. And the real-time strategy genre was certainly one such intersection. Okay, so what was the novel new technology that drove real-time strategy to popularity? Well, it was something you use every day. The mouse. Now, the mouse was invented all the way back in 1964, but it didn't really start to catch on until the Mac, Amiga, and Atari ST made it more popular through the 1980s. By the late 1980s, it was a pretty common peripheral on computers, although not always mandatory. Early PC games were often severely limited by the need to interact with them through a keyboard or sometimes maybe a joystick. This made fine grain input very difficult, but with the mouse, it was finally possible to interact directly with a game's graphical user interface. This resulted in hit games like 1987's Maniac Mansion, 1990's god game Populous, and Westwood's 1991 role-playing game hit Eye of the Beholder. If you look at these games today, they can seem kind of strange. They'll oftentimes have big buttons and bulky interfaces that are surrounding a main gameplay window. It seems very inefficient, but at the time it made a lot of sense because the mouse was new and players were just starting to learn how to interact with games by clicking on things. At the time, this was a big innovation. It was just more intuitive to click on buttons than to learn keyboard commands from a manual. It was Brett Sperry, a co-founder of Westwood Studios and director of development on Eye of the Beholder, who found a novel way to apply this to strategy games with Dune 2. The game used the mouse to let players quickly and directly interact with units in real time. It was a concept that relied entirely on the speed and the precision of mouse input. Real-time strategy games were actually very hard to pull off on earlier machines as the earliest efforts in the genre show. That's a topic I've covered in a previous video, so I will throw up a link to it right now. Of course, new technology is always just around the corner, and designers are always coming up with new ideas. And at the same time, ideas that had once seemed novel began to go stale, and they no longer grab the attention that they once did. I think the leaders in the genre, like Blizzard and Westwood, managed to hold on to popularity longer than they otherwise would have by embracing new innovations. It turned out that real-time strategy games were great for competitive multiplayer, and as 3D graphics became more popular, they were a pretty good showcase for early 3D hardware. But after about a decade of popularity, the genre did grow cold. And I think that does have to do with other new innovations that distracted PC gamers. Examples would be things like open world games, massively multiplayer RPGs, and competitive shooters. Compared to these titles, real-time strategy games just started to feel a bit old fashioned. So those are my three reasons why the real-time strategy genre died. Now, of course, if you liked this video, feel free to give it a like and subscribe. I also want to shout out my supporters on Patreon who, of course, make this content possible. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.